Mr. Hello, everybody. How you doing? I am Super Dave, and I am, I don't know, this is my TED Talk. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I am one of the judges for the upcoming event, which is tomorrow, and I'm also one of the teachers? For the workshop? I'm also one of the, uh, I'm also teaching a workshop. All right, so simple question. Let's go. So if, if we go back to my, you talking about like my origins? I guess your origin story. Um, I'll keep it brief. Um, uh, I think like a lot of people in my generation, especially, it was girls. Um, it was, um, you know, I started in uh, elementary school and then transitioned. Uh, I didn't fall in love with it until I was in high school. And, uh, and yeah, and I've been doing it ever since. So uh, falling in love with the high school, like, when was that transition, or what was that transition, I guess? Um, the transition was, it was the golden era of hip hop. Ah, and that was in around what year? 92, 92, 92 93. Uh, I was, uh, I was uh, in the 11th and 12th grade. Oh, location wise. Oh, this is when I was uh, uh, in the Bay Area. In the Bay Area. Yeah, okay. near, near San Francisco. So, uh, with the whole Bay Area, then did you just stay around in that area dancing or did you dance around? You know, yeah, um, um, I got into one group that I'm still in to this day. Uh, uh, and we are all, actually all successful dancers, freestylers, and choreographers, and creative directors, actually. Uh, and uh, once, once I got with them, um, uh, we got our first like big break to go to Los Angeles. And that's what, how we got into the industry, the dance industry. Uh, so, be, so, so we're, we're going from like, I guess the 90s yeah. era to now we got 2000. Well, so, um, uh, I moved to Los Angeles in 98 and uh, had a successful career. Uh, but even though um, I was doing like commercial stuff, um, I never went away from my underground roots. And I stayed and still stay doing it to this day. So then I guess the next question that follows through is what you just mentioned is how would you say like the the dance scene, the music scene, has changed through those eras? How much time we got? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> no, uh, uh, the dance has totally changed. Um, uh, I don't, I think like all things is uh, seasonal, only for certain things to come back. Uh, I would love for actual dance to come back because uh, I feel like everything is either over conceptual or um, a lot of uh, tricks involved. So uh, uh, I miss like groovy things and just just dance. Uh, and I'm not I'm not shitting on the other things. It's just I, I I do believe in too much of anything is just too much. So like I like balance. So what do you foresee, I guess, going into the next 10, 20 years? Oh, I don't know. The TikTok generation is, just, they're, they're, they're different. Um, that is a great question. I think it's a huge question mark, bro. Uh, I do love the fact there are, there are some people who I've met in this world, like recently, um, who still have uh, an appreciation for, um, uh, the hard work that goes into being an individual in dance and not so much I'm going to copy what everybody else is doing so shout out to them uh, and I really really respect them 
So now you, you know you've been to so many different countries, mm-hmm. uh, done so many workshops and other uh, experiences around the world. So I guess what can you you know with your experience from LA and now with the world and other countries? I guess is there a big difference, or what can we say about that? Well, LA is a little weird because. LA is technically the commercial dance capital of the world because of Hollywood and all the artists that come out of there and whatever. So uh, it, it's really a trend-setting place. Um, I don't really care about that. <laughs> like trends come and go. Um, yeah, LA. I don't even know how to explain it. Going to other countries, visiting other countries, or doing workshops, to other countries, seeing other dance styles. Mm-hmm. Like, how would you that I guess not even compare it to the LA and what, or the, even the US? Uh, how, what would you say like what was something that you kind of learned or experienced from just getting learned seeing that type of dance and seeing or listening to that type of music? Um, I think when I first started traveling, I didn't realize how big hip hop was. Uh, I think one of my first trips that I ever made uh, internationally was France. And, and it was like, I, I call it the golden era of France hip hop too, French hip hop. Eep up, <laughs> as they say. Uh, but, uh, uh, and it was, it was, it was eye opening because I was just like, oh my God, you guys are actually really good. And then same with Germany, Amsterdam. I was like, like some, some, some countries represent the culture really, really well and respectable. Shoes. Yeah, so shoes apparently with some dancers, they have a specific brand or a specific feel to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your preferred shoe? So, okay. So for many, many years, <laughs> I used to dance in a hiking boot. But this particular one, they, they make the shoe, like the brand still exists, but that particular shoe they do not make anymore and it was very, very lightweight, and it adjusted to any uh, surface, uh, and the durability was great. Uh, it was called a Dolomite. Yeah, it was great. Back in my, my coming up years, those were the, my, my, my shoes of choice, but ever since they stopped making them, um, I had to explore what other kind of shoes work. Uh, right now, I'm dancing in Chucks, like Converse, which is weird because I'm very flat-footed, so. But, um, I'm giving these a shot, and yeah, uh, Adidas, I've, I've, Pumas, I've tried a lot of different things. Is there any specific one that is like your go-to, what you go grab and these are the ones I would dance with? Uh, nah, I mean, right now these are broken in, so these, these are probably, if, if I had to do a judge demo, this is probably what I would put on right now. So then, when you go out, what shoes? Okay, so when you say go out, like, are we going like, like LA out because LA out? Let's go with LA. Like, because when you go out in LA, you don't really dance. You just like, I'm just, I'm just mingling. Hey, girl. So you just, it's more about the outfit as opposed to, like, I'll probably wear some Jordans if that's the case. But specific Jordan or Jordan? Uh, I like, I like thirteens. I like fours and thirteens. Um, I, I just got the, uh, um, what did I get? I got the, the dreads. Mm. I got the dreads. I got the olive green ones too. Olive fours. And the, and then I got the wheat and white 13s. Right. <laughs> Over here. Over here. Everyday wear. Just your everyday wear. Uh, oh man. Uh, I, I dress down, man. I, because I'm not in the, I'm not in the world of. I need to impress you. Uh, I wear what I like to wear. What makes you feel good? Right? Exactly. Like, it's like, oh my God, you're wearing that? Like, Fuck, I'm not trying to impress you. You're not my wife, I don't care. Fuck, I'm not even married. <laughs> but there are a lot of students in Korea, um, mm-hmm. and they want to be very good at dancing. Mm-hmm. Is there any words of wisdom or advice that you can share? Absolutely. Uh, don't judge your journey off somebody else's. What tends to happen is that 
people see someone very good and they don't realize all the shit that they went there to, went through to get there. Like you're 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 only judging the tip of the iceberg and not seeing what's how how big it really goes down. Uh, and you know, like as as we as I mentioned earlier, it's just like people want the instant fix, uh, the instant fame, the instant this, and, and it's okay to fuck up. It's okay to mess up. It's okay not to be perfect because I guarantee you, when you sort that out uh, and you, uh, you, you use the new connections in the brain to help you problem solve, like that's, that's where the, the you really comes into play. As a dancer, when you're up there, is it just dancing for fun, dancing up on stage or doing the workshop? What is an important aspect to you uh, okay, so when I'm teaching, uh, I like to teach. Like, I'm trying to give you some value that you can take home later and actually improve yourself. Uh, I don't come here. I don't come out here very often, so like I I, I, I have to you know spoon feed so to speak. Um, if I go to a club or something like that. Um, I don't care who's there. I'm not trying to battle. I don't, I don't, that's, those days are behind me because the, the ego that I had back then is not the ego that I have now. It's just like, I just make sure I have a good time. And uh, if, I don't know how else to say it. It's just like, I just want, I just want to dance to, to some good music and, and party and meet people and that's it. It's, 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 it's not, complicated. And that, I think that's probably because of uh, the, the era of where I, when I came up too. It's just like, oh, like party? Oh, well, all right, we, we just gonna just groove and dance with girls? All right, cool, let's, like, let's just have a good time. It's like, um, uh, I, I don't have the time for the, hey, uh, you win. <laughs> So, uh, so saying all that to say, I just like to go out and just have a good time. All right, thank you. You gonna do a quick outro? I'm Super Dave. I'm in Korea, and I had a great ass time. Peace out. <laughs>